Number 67, Family Feast. Number 67! Don't forget your steamed broccoli. Hold it. Newman, you wouldn't eat broccoli if it was deep fried in chocolate sauce. I love broccoli. Then maybe you'd like to have a piece. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, one of my favorites, one of the greatest country singers, and heck, one of the most successful singers in the history of music. You pay time. when you go to a Kenny Rogers roaster? You don't have to pay. You could just go in there and say, give me all the chicken you have and then do a dance for me. That's what you could do. And they would all have to dance, these people. You're Kenny Rogers. You could say, build a statue of me using the available chicken here. I mean, that's the kind of power that you have. I went to see him in concert a few times, and one of the things he would do is he'd say, how many men out there in the audience were dragged here to see me and you're not a fan and you know a handful of hands would go up and he'd pick somebody and be like you he's like how many of my songs do you think you know and the guy would say I ah, like three I know like this one and that one and he'd say all right so what I'm gonna do is I want you every time I start a song if you know it if you've heard it before I want you to put your hand up this high if you like it if you've heard it before and you like it, put it up this high. And he goes in for every time you put your hand here, I'm going to give you $50. Every time you put your hand up here, I'm going to give you $100. And it became like a really funny joke that he would start a song and that the hand would go up again. And it just kind of showed how big and successful his library of songs was. And Kenny's peeling off $100 bills and tossing them to this one guy in the crowd. This is John Brown. In 1964, he buys Kentucky Fried Chicken from Colonel Sanders. The Colonel is uh, he's a great man. He's different. Anybody wears a white suit and whiskers and a bow tie is a little bit different, but he had the imagination to do it. Uh, he, he's really a legend. Then in 1971, he sells the company at an enormous profit. So John takes all the money he earned from selling Kentucky Fried Chicken and he invests it into different basketball teams. He purchases the ABA's Kentucky Colonels and then he purchases a stake in the Boston Celtics, as well as the Buffalo Braves, who went on to become the L.A. Clippers. Then in 1979, he goes on to serve a term as the governor of the state of Kentucky. One of his last public appearances, Governor Brown awarded the colonel with the Distinguished Service Medallion and announced that a marble bust of the colonel would be put in the Capitol Rotunda in Frankfurt. I highly appreciate this medal. Thanks to such few of us had it, John. Thank you so much. Take care. Then he went on to marry Miss America, Phyllis George. She was also very famous on her own. She was one of the first female reporters for the NFL, and she appeared on an episode of The Muppet Show. Phyllis George, 15 seconds to curtain, Phyllis. Oh, thank you, Scooter. Say, we got a very special show planned for you tonight. Are you sure about that? Oh, I guarantee it's... Is it funny? The guarantee just ran out. <laughs> So in 1987, a few years removed from being governor, he goes back into the restaurant industry and he purchases the Chicken Grill in Louisville, Kentucky. Then he starts a company with his wife called Chicken by George, and this was to sell boneless, skinless chicken breasts to stores across the country. Chicken by George is a massive success, so John Brown and Phyllis George sell it to Hormel Foods, and then they take that money to buy the fast food chain Miami Subs. Then, in 1991, he starts a business relationship with Kenny Rogers, and together they found Kenny Rogers Roasters with John Brown serving as the CEO. The restaurant focuses on the brand new and very popular, exciting world of rotisserie chicken. They opened the very first Kenny Rogers Roasters in Coral Springs, Florida, and Kenny was there for the opening. Here's a look at the 1994 menu. Wood fire roasted chicken, mac and cheese, cinnamon, apples, mashed potatoes, fresh chicken pitas and salads, Kenny Rogers famous muffins. Then they had a kid's meal with two drumsticks and one side for just 99 cents. The decor of the restaurant featured a lot of Kenny Rogers memorabilia. You would have large photos of Kenny. You'd also have replicas of his gold albums, as well as original artwork painted by Kenny himself. The big competition for them was Boston Chicken, which later went on to become Boston Market. It's morning at Boston Chicken. Fresh vegetables are arriving, and we're making our mashed potatoes from scratch. We're roasting freshly marinated chicken. Baking homemade chicken pot pies. Boston chicken, the freshest thing going. 
Rotisserie chicken was such a new thing, people hadn't really tried it. But because it was so popular at these restaurants, other people wanted to get in on the game. John Brown's old company, KFC, responded with Rotisserie Gold, their own line of rotisserie chicken. And in 1994, grocery stores started selling rotisserie chicken, starting with Kroger and Costco. And by 1998, Safeway and Albertson and just about every other grocery chain started selling rotisserie chickens. And this was so much competition for Boston Chicken and for Kenny Rogers Roasters. People could now pick this up at their local grocery store for a really cheap price and not have to go to the restaurant. In December of 1992, a smaller chain called Cluckers claimed that Kenny Rogers Roasters had stolen their entire menu, had stolen all of their recipes, and so they sued Kenny Rogers Roasters. And the two battled in court for two years until Kenny Rogers Roasters solved the problem by purchasing Cluckers. John Brown expanded the footprint of Kenny Rogers Roasters all around the world. He expanded it to 425 locations, and then he sold it to a Malaysian group called Burjaya. The company looked to expand into Great Britain, but their expansion slowly dwindled as these grocery sales of rotisserie chickens continued. And then by 1998, they went bankrupt, and they were purchased by Nathan's for just $1.25 And then Kenny Rogers sued to have his name removed from the company, and this didn't work. Hi, I'm Kenny Rogers, and you mm -mm, do I love ice cream. That's why I decided to open up my own ice cream park. Ice cream, and a cup of waffle cone, and Kenny's ice cream. For a while, Nathan's made Kenny Rogers Roasters Express as part of its mall food court offerings. And if you went to a place like Miami Subs or a Nathan's Famous, you would have a menu that would include Kenny Rogers Roasters, Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips, Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs, and maybe a few others. And then by the year 2000, Kenny Rogers Roasters was down to just 90 locations, only 40 of them in the United States. The last Kenny Rogers Roasters in the United States of America was in the town of Ontario, California, in the Ontario Mall, and it closed down on the final day of the year 2011. Today, there are 156 remaining restaurants, so they've increased in numbers again. They are not in the United States at all, but they are in Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, Indonesia, Dubai, India, and Kuwait. It is on at Kenny Rogers, Spangle Habanero's finally here. Come and taste it only at Kenny. Of course, the most famous pop culture reference from Kenny Rogers Roasters is the episode of Seinfeld. Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. <laughs> Rogers can't sell chicken around here. We got chicken places on every block. He is the gambler. <laughs> There's a subplot in the story where George is wearing a fur hat that's made out of rat fur. Thanks, uh... Man, it is coming down hard out there. <laughs> oh, gross. Which causes them to be closed by the health department. Sorry? On an episode of The Sopranos, it's revealed that Janice Soprano once worked at a Kenny Rogers Roasters and actually served food to Barry Sanders of the NFL. Kenny Rogers is a bigger star than you think. This is the list of the highest selling artists of all time. We've got the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Elvis, Elton John, right? You scroll down here past Eric Clapton, Neil Diamond, Prince, Paul McCartney. You get to Janet Jackson and Journey. And then next up is Kenny Rogers. Look at that. I always thought it was funny that Kenny Rogers and Roy Rogers both had chicken franchises. Uh, Kenny Rogers was a singer, but Roy Rogers was a singer. He was also an actor. He was a cowboy. He was a lot of things. And so with his restaurant, it was the same way. They sold chicken. They also sold hamburgers and they sold roast beef. I mean, he did it all. I dug into his whole career. I tried to find out if I knew a lot about Roy Rogers, and I think I did. I put a video about it right up here. You can check that out. Otherwise, YouTube says this is what is best for you. If you want more videos, I got a second channel. And I'll see you next time.